Father, may my words be your words, and will you open up our hearts to your love. Amen. Would you like to be seated? Um, my message on my watch tells me I need to apologize to the live stream uh, because it was delayed in going on or something went wrong. So uh, I think you're all on now, and you're not waiting in some ether waiting room uh, there. Um, when uh, we have the schools in, um, we do a treasure hunt. Um, so we take, uh, we've got pictures of um, parts of objects around the church, so like a part of the font, so they don't get the whole thing. And they've got, I don't know, 12 pictures, and uh, they have to go around, find them, and then try and guess what they're used for or what they are or why we have them. Um, and then that opens up. So they have a treasure hunt that has no prize. They don't know who got more right answers than the other people, and yet they delight in it. There's absolute holy chaos in this church as 60, 70 children run around trying to find the treasure with squeals of delight when they find it eventually, even if they haven't got a clue what it is. Um, and uh, then we come together, and it opens up me to share our faith in a way through uh, what the church is. And for a lot of those children, um, that is their only experience of church until maybe they will go to a wedding or a funeral or something uh, when they're older. They no longer in uh, non-church schools uh, pray, they no longer sing hymns, they have no exposure. Um, and so I delight in their squeals that go around most of the time uh, in this place because in some ways um, it removes the barrier of church and what they fear about it or how they think they should behave in church or what it's going to be like. I mean, I have a, a confession probably to Mike that, oh, he's not there, he's here, um, is that uh, their biggest delight is if we have courage and take some up to see the organ up there um, because it's like up a secret stairway in the church uh, on there. We don't do it too often, though, uh, on that. Uh, so, And the last uh, light party, a child came in who had been on a, a school visit. Um, I subsequently found out after I heard him speaking at the door, and he was shouting at his friend's mother, come on, hurry up, this will be the best church you ever come in. And I'm not sure it had anything to do with Jesus, but you never know uh, in that. You know. So we want that delight, that wonder when we come about faith. Because it wasn't about his great experience of going in churches and looking at architecture or anything else. It was the fact that when he came into church, there was something unexpected and delightful about what he experienced. He, in some ways, discovered a treasure he didn't know existed. And I don't know what happens spiritually in those moments, but I do trust that the Holy Spirit plants a seed and stirs up what he needs to stir up as children are here with us. We all love to find a bit of treasure, don't we? Although I have discovered, discovered the older I get that one person's treasure is another person's junk. But we all have treasures, and it's a delight when we find something unexpected. There's something of worth to us, not necessarily a monetary worth. So what is this treasure that Jesus calls the kingdom of heaven? The kingdom of heaven, I think, well, I'm going to talk about two things of it today. One is it's salvation, right? Jesus died for us. He died for us. He rose again. We have life in relationship with God because of that, because we are forgiven. We live under his grace. And one day there's heaven in his presence for eternity because of the cross and the resurrection. But the other thing is, as we experience the kingdom of heaven here on earth in these lives that we live, those experiences when heaven touches earth, and Jesus touches us, whether it be a moment, whether it be a word in the scripture, maybe it's an, an, a piece that you can't understand or a love that dis, is described in no other way. It's that wonder of when we've been in the presence of God. And it gives us that taste for heaven one day, that we'll have that all the time. It's so good. And we look at two people here who find the treasure in a different way. One finds it unexpectedly hidden in a field. And the other one is searching for different things until he finds the pearl of great value. When they find it, they both do the same thing. They give up everything they have for this piece of treasure that they've found. But why? 
I think on some levels we can understand sacrifice for something that we love or value. I was um, at a family gathering yesterday, and my, uh, my cousin, I said I wasn't going to do this, but, you know, I, oh, if my cousin's child's listening, good on her, um, is like, my cousin's child has just become a teenager, and she's become a textbook style and is a real pain. And he was uh, kind of, um, you yeah. know, expressing his distress at his teenage daughter um, and, and what she's going on to. But then went on to talk about his... Uh, they both play ice hockey, the two kids, and they, they play at a quite a high level. And um, they've just been uh, overseas uh, with it. And, you know, so very exciting. But it started because my cousin David played at first, and then they wanted to give it a go. And so I said, oh, do so. Do you still play ice hockey? And he says, no. You know, a father, we give up everything that we do for our children because I want them to have the opportunity. I want to be part of what they do. We sacrifice for people we love, don't we? We sacrifice things for people we love, and that, that doesn't have to be a child. It could be for friends, a spouse, a partner, whatever. But the thing about those sacrifices, there's no guarantee that you'll get back in return as is experiencing right now, and we hope changes pretty soon. But they will fail us. Because we will. We all fail each other. We hurt each other. We disappoint. We don't make choices that we would want you to make choices for. Isn't that right? We will all do that. But the sacrifice we make for the hidden treasure of Jesus is solid, won't change, won't be lost, even in the life beyond this one. Now, these two men obviously had wealth of, of some nature because they went and sold it all to buy this field. And they weren't buying a, a field, you know, it wasn't a Jack Sparrow moment, I found the buried treasure and I better just, you know, hoard it or, or that kind of, I'm going to speculate to accumulate thing. They went and bought a field with a, a pearl in it. It's not in the scheme of things, in a wealth-wise, that much value. But there was something about this treasure that was worth giving up everything for. And if it wasn't about the wealth, then it was about the beauty of what they found. The beauty of the pearl. The precious thing that they found. That precious love of Jesus that holds, it's invaluable. You can't put a price on it. It captured their hearts. And it's something they didn't want to be without. Something that they would give up the cost of everything else for because what they found couldn't be found anywhere else. The kingdom of heaven, we can't really put a price on it. It is the promise of salvation and the promise of eternity, of course. And we can accumulate everything that we think is important in this life. But let's be honest, we're all going to face death one day. And as the saying goes, you can't take it with you. There's something more valuable in life that we should treasure. And it is the treasure we should all be searching for. It's that experience that the Holy Spirit leads us in that shows us something of what eternity is going to be like. That taste of heaven. And those are the things that we find and we stand in awe of. We stand and can't explain what we feel, what we experience, and what it is that we've found. And maybe, like that man, kept it hidden in the field so that he could get, possess it and then go back and explore its real beauty and discover more about it until it's secure in our hearts and then we can share it. The more we look at it, the more we marvel, the more beauty we find. And the Lord reveals more and more of his beauty as we hold on to that treasure and look to discover it. Sometimes I look at the gospel and wonder why anyone would believe in it, really. As you would know, I do a, a lot of funerals, and again, it's my opportunity, I think, to share the gospel and the love of Jesus, but there's such a short time, and what do my words really mean but for God using them? And it's very difficult, I think, to articulate what is it, what is this thing that I have that I can't live without? How do I share what that is to people who don't know him? And especially in a world where there's suffering, where it's not explained, and, and it's countercultural to be a Christian, right? 
I mean, we don't think we're bad these days. We don't think we do things wrong. It's countercultural to do that. And also, when you become a Christian, it's not all easy. And we don't, let's be honest, all live a life like we should. So we don't even portray it as being a very attractive thing at times. And so I try. I express it in the hope I live with in this life and the next time and, and the next life because I live with that living hope. I do try and express a love that never fails me where I'm accepted no matter what, where he can take all my shame, all my regrets, my pain. I can share that it's someone who guides me. And I can share all those reasons I couldn't live without it, all the doing, right? But I think it's the one thing that can't really be expressed in words that really holds me. And that is how beautiful he makes life for me. In the pain, in the suffering, in the joys. You cannot express the beauty Jesus brings to your life. It's the pearl I can't be without, and I know many of you can't be without. And so the real beauty in that pearl and in that treasure is not in its discovery, as wonderful as that is. It's as we go deeper and look at the real beauty and find different ways of beauty in all that God gives us in this life and then the life to come. Now, the danger is with finding treasure and buying the field and looking at your beauty is that we get easily bored and it becomes a duty, doesn't it? We come to church because you better be at church because otherwise the vicar's going to phone and find out where you are, um, which is generally what she does when you're not here, but not because you're not at church. She's worried that you're okay. Um, but isn't it? It comes a place of duty. Or oh, I only come when I'm on the rotor because I better be there then because I'm going to let someone down if I don't do it that place where we gave up everything, where we couldn't wait to read the Bible, couldn't wait to pray, couldn't wait to come and sing or to be in church or to be here in the Lord's presence gets replaced by other activities. Lunches, sport, a lion. I mean, who doesn't want a lion? I could have had one this morning, I can tell you. you know, and I'm not, saying, I'm not saying those are bad if you have them every now and again. I'm not saying that. But the thing is, if we lose it, we let it slip. And we lose the wonder of Jesus and what he brings to our lives. We lose the wonder of that pearl, of that treasure. And eventually we leave the field and look for other things, things that will never ultimately satisfy. Because if we don't prioritize it, we eventually drift away. And so in order to hold on to the wonder, we have to step back, retreat, retreat take time. Remind ourselves of those experiences. When you've had one, you will know it, and you will want it again and again. You want to go back and recapture it. And that's difficult if you don't spend time. And so this morning, I want you to ponder the wonder of the treasure you find in Jesus. And it may be you haven't found that treasure yet, and you haven't found that pearl. Well, then my prayer is that you find it today. Others of you may know it. You may think of those times when you just know it was the Lord and you just love to feel that again. But go back to the treasure. Go back and spend time. Because even if you don't recapture what was, he'll give you something new. You'll find something new and have that feeling again. And if you don't have those feelings to go back or you don't know how to do that, then the easiest suggestion I can say to you is go look at creation. Go look at creation. A lot of people will be away now and going away over the next couple of months, and maybe you're at the sea. If you don't know where that wonder is, then go sit on the beach and look at the sea. And if you see something more powerful than yourself, then you've found it. If you've got to stay in Hampton, then go look at an oak tree. Go look at the age of those, the vastness of those, how they change through the seasons, how insects gather, birds gather. Go look at the intricacies of a newborn baby. Then you'll find the wonder of Jesus who gave it all up for you. And there in that place, may you find him. There's a worship song. Um, it's called, uh, will, uh, then will, so will I. 
one billion reasons, and I just cut a bit out of it. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. If the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. If the oceans roar your greatness, so will I. For if everything exists to lift you high, so will I. If the wind goes where you send it, so will I. If the rocks cry out in silence, so will I. And as you speak, a hundred billion failures disappear. Where you lost your life, so I could find it here. If you left the grave behind you, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've done. Every part designed in a work of art called love. If you gladly chose surrender, so will I. So take a look at the treasure. If you haven't before, then search for the treasure and let it fill you with wonder. A treasure so beautiful, it's worth giving up at least some time. But I'd suggest it's worth giving up everything to know his love and his grace and the wonder of who he is. Amen. Let's just take a moment's silence.